Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition stream with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, the Dungeon Master, Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, the Half-Elf Shadow Sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends... Jillian Donitus, playing uh, Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloom Stalker Ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the Human Battlemaster. We're so excited to be able to announce that tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use at their game tonight. And I'm still using these really gorgeous gold dice. I've totally fallen in love with them. They're a little ostentatious, and that's why I like them. <laughs> um, and we are giving away a free set of Skull Splitter dice every month now to one lucky viewer. So if you follow us on Twitch or are subscribed to us on YouTube or both, all you have to do is follow the link in the description below to confirm your entry. You also get a plus one bonus uh, if you follow us on Twitter as well. We'll be announcing the winner for January shortly. So now we're in the February contest. So uh, if you've already entered the prior contest last month, we had almost 500 people <laughs> enter. Nice. Uh, it was super awesome. But uh, if you join us again, we'll you got another shot at getting a free set of awesome dice from Skull Splitter. If you don't want to play the odds and win a free set, you can also head on over to SkullsplitterDice.com and we've got a discount code DDUDES that you can use to save 15% off your first order. When last we left our heroes, they had ventured far to the south of Drakenheim, about five miles back to Sebastian Crow's hometown of Emberwood Village, the last bastion of civilization on the edges of the ruined city. There, our heroes paid a visit to Sebastian's longtime mentor, Eldrick Runeweaver, and r caught up with River and Sebastian's family, who were all staying together in the little crow house. After a little bit of catching up, Sebastian has now followed up on several rev revelations. The fact that his mother, Leneth Eventide, was an archmage of the Amethyst Academy. Leneth did not ever tell Sebastian's father about her identity as a powerful mage. And so Sebastian, Veo, and Pluto resolved to visit the old crow house where Sebastian was born in search of some answers. The house has been abandoned since Sebastian's birth and searching through the home beset with visions of strange shadowy hounds and otherworldly figures our three heroes found a cloak a pair of glasses and an amulet that had been buried in an empty grave behind the house putting on these three articles of clothing they were able to step through a magical mirror that belonged to leneth in her life in the master bedroom into a strange sanctum of some kind in a dark and shadowy realm with halls of obsidian beset by shadowy creatures and tracked by an invisible hound of darkness our heroes have explored the halls of leneth's eldritch eldritch sanctum finding an inert clone of leneth eventide but more so a active version or an an active well That's who's to mom. say kind of Tra tracking wet footprints through the halls of the sanctum our three heroes came upon a icy cold chamber overlooking the uh, a large bay window overlooking the darkness of this shadowy realm wherein there was a large metallic sphere that they opened up to find 
Laneth Eventide, wearing a, cl- uh, a cloak. She is a lithe elven woman of a rather regal bearing. She has kind of aquiline, uh, aquiline features to her very sharp nose, long pointed ears, and raven black hair. But her skin is a sallow gray white, almost like it's sagging in strange places, wrinkled almost in a very unelven like way. There's something off about her complexion. But she gazes at you with piercing cold eyes that are almost colder than the temperature of the chamber that you are in. It's a small room, as I said, overlooking the darkness of the shadowy realm. The walls and floors covered with a thick sheen of rime and ice. The steps then building up to this metallic sphere that you opened up, in which is a bed of snow where Leneth was inside the sphere itself when you opened it. She looks at the three of you regarding you with, again, these piercing, this piercing cold look, and she says, What are you doing here? This is my domain, and you will leave now. My name's Sebastian Crow, and I'm here to rescue you. Pluto? Vea, what do you say? Could we just close the orb and just kind of like go about our day? <laughs> Seal it back up. Mama Carrot Top, it's uh, nice to see me too. We've been, we've been looking for you. She responds to Vea. What? Mama Carrot Top? How <laughs> dare you, you insolent wretch? Hey. My ears just go down. I'm like, oh, don't I'm talk sorry. to her like that. She's my friend. She will not address me by such vulgar terms. I thought you were going to be much nicer than this. I'm not impressed. You may leave peacefully now. I'm very busy, and this is my domain. I don't know how you got past the guardians outside, but you are not welcome here. Do you even know who he is? Yeah, do you know who I am? That you're addressing to just leave? All I see are three strangers and intruders. Get out now. I think you'd want to hear what he has to say. I'm going to uh, fix my glasses and address... Uh, Ma'am, this is your son. As you push the glasses back on, as you look at her through the, the glasses, you don't see a person of flesh and blood, but rather an immaculate sculpture of ice and snow. Rather than the sagging kind of alabaster skin that she had before, you see just this frost and like fro like it look her skin looks like packed snow she's still wearing a cloak over top of it this brown kind of graying tattered bit of cloak but even her hair looks like it's made of strands of ice and it's not the same color cloak that uh sebastian's wearing no that we found okay no tobias crow do you know him If you are looking for somebody, I think you've come to the wrong place. This isn't your mom. Are you an angel? (laughs) She smiles for a, a, a brief moment. No, I'm not. Why do you look like that? You're an imposter, obviously. She cocks her head, looks back at you, and says... I've had enough of this. Wait, show her the journals. Roll for initiative. No! We're going to beat up your mom. This isn't my mom. This is not your mom. This is one of your many moms. You have... have I, I have perpetually more moms than I previously had. 
So I can I can spare one, I guess. <laughs> we have another one in the yeah. We have we have we spare. have one in the in the living room in the prep the spare mom. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, the mom. Multiple mom. <laughs> How many moms do you have now? More than one, <laughs> apparently. Y- you've definitely gone. What do we got for initiative in moms? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh-huh. Ten. Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm distracted by your mom. She's an angel. Imagine, She's a snow angel. I'm mad she yelled at me. She gets a she gets shot now. I like I like how your ears went down. Oh, only only moms okay. can, you know, scold you, right? You know? So first Veo, you catch a glimpse of her reaching into her cloak and moving towards what looks like a magic wand and a glowing crystal orb as she steps forward out of the icy pod before you. She's moving to act violently. Hmm. It's your turn. Pull out my bow, and I'm like, nope! And I take my bow, and I aim towards the hand with the wand. Okay. So I'm going to use my dread ambusher, and I get my three attacks on my first turn. Mm Mm-hmm. Eight. It, uh, s- aiming for her hand, it sails right between her hand and her thigh, singing through the cloak and s- tearing it slightly with a, with a loud rip. Whoops. <laughs> Second shot. <laughs> Sorry about your cloak. Uh, Thirteen. It collides with her, and as she does, sh- so she turns her hand, and a shimmering shield appears in front of her and blocks the arrow. Oh, last shot. Get her. Oh no, eight again. The last shot is also deflected. Oh, and uh, in that moment I say, well, I don't want to be on the end of that wand. So I start to run out the door <laughs> and around the corner, but I don't want to go far because I still want to keep an eye out for my comrades. So just right around that corner. Okay. And I got my extra 10 foot of movement. So yeah, just around the corner. I can make it. <laughs> yes. That's it. Okay. It is Leneth's turn. She produces a crystalline snowball from underneath. It's almost like a snow globe. Oh. And That's not so bad. As she pulls it out of her, her cloak, she drops it down on the ground in front of her and it cracks open and as it does so it a humanoid form emerges from inside it as you can hear the crackling of freezing ice and air and water as this massive ice sculpture forms into this hulking muscled creature which looms up right in front of you Um, hi, how are you? And as it reaches up on top of it, these big spikes start to grow out the top of its back that then crack open and break off into four small fluttering ice creatures. This got so intense. Um, she, maybe she did it by accident. She dropped it, right? You hear his veil in the background. Son of a biscuit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked about all So this. I just need to make some additions to our initiative. Oh. oh, good. Oh, super. That's what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when it comes to first impressions, your mom is really losing me. <laughs> I don't think it's his mom. I'm, I'm like looking at you. I'm like, this is not my mom. I'll introduce you to her later. <laughs> st- so I can stab this one? <laughs> yes. I think we're safe to s- it's safe to say we're uh, we're on stabbing terms. Okay, good, good. Okay, so at the top then we have Veo, then Lena, then Sebastian, then the big ice creature elemental, then Pluto, then the small little ones. <sighs> With that, uh Leneth draws her the, the, the cloak up around her. Um, and she cries out, 
Destroy them. Okay. Sebastian, it is your turn. You stand as this hulking creature of elemental ice bears down upon you. The air is freezing around it, coalescing into more frozen bits and spikes as it raises up its fists that are just fists of icicles. Um... Hmm. All right. Sebastian rolls up his sleeves. Says, I don't know if this is going to work on all of these things, but it's time to give him the old razzle-dazzle. And I cast Hypnotic Pattern. Hypnotic Pattern. Okay. <laughs> Hypnotic. <laughs> Hypnotic. No, I like that. It's Hypnotic good. Pattern. Where would you like to target it? Uh, probably on... Can I get uh, Leneth, the big guy, and this dude? Yeah, you can. All right. It's pretty big, eh? Get him. It's a big one? Yeah, 30 foot mm -hmm. cube. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, you need to make some saving throws against my 16. The Mephit fails. The Earth Elemental gets a 15. Uh, 16 is the, the same. Okay, so the Ice Elemental fails. <gasps> and Lena, uh, she gets uh, uh, like a 30. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is she like a wizard or something? <laughs> Probably. Um, I mean, that still gives me... Actually, a it's a 27, but we'll be fair. Okay. Um, and then I'm like, oh, time to, time to back up here. Pluto, it's all you. <laughs> okay. The ice elemental... Uh, hypnotized in place by the hypnotic pattern lowers its two arms down and just stares at the pattern Pluto you're up I uh I kind of like walk around it okay like underneath one of its arms as if I was admiring like a sculpture like oh sorry pardon and uh I stab Lenneth with a javelin okay <laughs> so you move around I go oop -a -doop -a -doo. um I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to meet you. I was so excited, but now I have to stab you. And this is just how this is. Uh, 22. That is a hit. Uh, for nine damage. And I'm going to do it again. Sebastian and Veo, as you see Pluto's weapon you're using your spear your so your spear. spear as you stab into it it's not blood that comes out of her but bits of snow and ice that trickle down the spear the, the spear <gasps> she's a snow angel i knew it snow demon snow <laughs> demon <laughs> i have a irrational fear of snow people and uh, i'm going to <laughs> take it out on her um, it's part of my lore <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, precision strike for 22 again. Okay, that is a hit. And for uh, 8 damage. Okay. Anything else? Pluto? Oh, uh, uh, wait, does precision attack get the thing with the more damage? I don't believe it does. Yeah, it's just to help hit. Yeah, it. yeah. So cool, cool. Uh, okay. And then I'm oh, and then I'm gonna shove her under the ground. Okay. Shovey, shovey. Shove her. Uh, twenty-one. Yes. <laughs> she is still a feeble mage. As mighty as she is, she is not that strong. So I'm you, beating you, up you, a lady, <laughs> a snow lady. I go. Uh, I, I'm your prince charming, Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> and I start smashing her in with oh. my shield as I'm stabbing her. Okay. Because I'm a gentleman. I'm really sorry about your mom. <laughs> you're like looking back at me. You're stabbing her, smashing her with the shield. I'm sorry. Okay. The Mephits. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, here they come. Ice to see you. 
Oops. They flutter through the air on wings of ice, almost impossibly, this glitter of dust following in their wake. And as they do so, they exhale a burst of uh, of cold out in front of them. And I need both of you, Sebastian, two dexterity saving throws. You've got to make one there, Pluto. And is it against me? Is it directed at me or is it an AoE? It's an AoE. It's a cone of frost. 18. 18? You make your saving throw, but you still take five points of cold damage. I will accept. I get a 19 and an uh, 10. So those both succeed. You still do take uh, 10 points of cold damage from the two attacks, and I will need two concentration checks. Uh, that's a 27 and a 11. <laughs> both succeed. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Daisy, daisy. Okay. And we go to the top of the round with Veo. All right. I hear all this commotion and I peek my head back out and I'm like, oh, you guys, you need some help. Um, and I cast Zephyr Strike to get a little bit more on my uh, bow. <laughs> and I take my two shots. My first one with advantage, one with Zephyr Strike. Who are you shooting? shooting? Oh, sorry. I'm shooting the elemental right beside. Um, Super. Yep. The, or sorry, the Mephits. The Mephits? Yep. Uh, and that is for 18. 18, it hits. Uh oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Sorry, mental math. Uh, 25 damage. Oh. It pops <laughs> like shattered glass and violently explodes into shrapnel. Oh no. no. Sebastian, you need to make a dexterity saving uh -oh. throw. Sorry. It's okay. I'm really good at these. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 15. Okay. You take four slashing damage. Oh, you're getting I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm okay. fine. Okay. Kill the other one. And That's I take good. the other That shot. is another concentration check, though. Oh. Yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> I uh, then take the other shot. Um, can I shoot past it was a uh, Sebastian? Yeah, you, they're flying in the air around him, so okay. you can absolutely get the yeah, shot so in. I on take it. my second shot against the other Mephit. Against the other Mephit, yeah. and that is fifteen. This can only go well. It goes right into the Mephit. Oh, <laughs> twenty-two <laughs> Those damage. Hits. It pops like a light bulb, and once again, Sebastian. <laughs> Sorry. Now Raining that one ice. unfortunately also damages the. Ice elemental with the explosion, shatter, uh, shaking it out of the hypnotic pattern. Oh no! And I need a new another dexterity save. Yeah. Twenty-three. You're fine. Concentration. The <laughs> elemental does fail its dexterity saving throw, and it takes the full damage yes. uh, from the shard, but it is now snapped out of the hypnotic pattern. Do I still need to make a concentration for this little me fit here? If you so choose, yes. Or you can d dismiss this if you just want to fail, if you don't care. I care a little. Okay. Seven, uh, sorry, uh, 13. Okay, the spell is still in effect. Hooray. Yeah, you might as well, right? Yeah, until, might as well until, until I cast, have a different spell to cast. But. Okay. Super. So, Veo, anything else? Nope. Okay. I'm stay where I am. So... Thank we you. now go to Lenneth. Sharded. <laughs> she grits her teeth. As, as you bear down over her, she grits her teeth and disappears from view. Ah! No! Snow Woman! She's a demon! Mm -hmm. But not to you. Oh, I can still see her? Yes. Because you're wearing <gasps> the glasses. So you just see this, this shadowy outline. So she snaps her fingers and she's still, still there? Yes. Like, cool trick. Yep. And she turns to uh, she turns to run from you, though. You can make an attack of opportunity. Get her. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Get her, Pluto. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. That is a hit. Yes. <laughs> Go, got it. Um. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, nine damage. Nice. I go, there's no way you're getting away from me. Yes. Uh, she does succeed her concentration check, though. Oh, I'm going to make her fail one of these. <laughs> I'm going to keep. <laughs> okay. Stab. Stop her in place when you do that? It does because you have Sentinel, correct? Cool. Yeah. She didn't think that one through. <laughs> okay. Sebastian, we go to you. Um, so there's this big ice guy that just woke up in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a panic, Sebastian holds out his hand and just starts blasting fire beams at it. Okay. Casting Scorching Ray. Nice. Uh, that's a 10. The Scorching Ray is deflected off of its icy hide. Oh, no. Fire another one. That's a little better. 13? It does not penetrate through the ice. Oh, okay, last leaving one. Leaving just a small like crack on one of the shards of ice. All right, skull splitter dice, go. Oh! There's a crit. <laughs> nice. Skull splitter crit. Yes. There it is. I just have to announce it, and then it works. <laughs> to talk to it you gotta yeah schmooze the dice <laughs> so i'm just gonna roll twice the amount of dice here for my crit and actually i'm gonna use um empowered spell to re-roll three of those dice <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that's a good call there we go nice yes 13 damage all righty Fire. The elemental shrugs at the hit. <laughs> I back Although up. parts of it have buckled away, the fro and melted slightly, it already freezes in place, even though some of its mass has been broken off. So we now go to the elemental who turns and basically it takes its arms out as wide as it can and it just spins <laughs> just kind of like the top of its tor- it's the bottom part of it almost rotating in place and just spins like a top Uh-oh. with this two mace like arms just slapping both of you in the back of the head oh. so one on Sebastian and one on Oh Pluto. I didn't I didn't move away did I uh, I don't think you did no I get a 22 against Pluto Ooh. and an 18 versus Sebastian Solid hit. Okay. Uh, Both of you take 20 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Boom. How are you doing? Uh, uh, and you can just feel the ringing in your ear, and you can hear the shattering of the icicles that have broken off the other side. And as it completes the spin, it just flexes, and more spikes come out of the end of its fists. Uh, um... Uh oh. <laughs> How are we going to deal with this thing? I'm, that's why I'm beating up Lennon. Yeah. Pluto, you're up. Yep. Um, as I recover from my mild concussion, <laughs> I go into a flurry of stabbing Snow Lady. Okay. Why won't tell your thing to stop it? <laughs> 16? That it, it seems as your blade comes down, there is a field of force protecting her. She tricky, yo. Uh, 11. Uh, okay, I got an action surge. Okay. Okay, uh, 25. 25, that will go through. The uh, blow connects. For uh, 10 damage. Again, in place of blood from the connected blow, just bits of ice, snow, and even a little bit of, bit of gravel fly from her. Uh, and then uh, a 24. Another solid hit. For uh, 8 damage. That leaves her bloodied. And then... Oh, um, is she... You can mark that for me, Joe. I'm going to just... I'm just going to... I'm actually going to use um, nice. my second Thanks. wind this time. Because she's still down on the ground? No, she stood up. Okay. On a previous turn, yeah. Um, 
I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna knock her down again. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go. Uh, I got a seven. <laughs> Wait. We do our best. How do I do it? Do uh, I do she it? She gets a thirteen. How do I? Uh, I'm just doing my strength. opposed athletics. Uh, oh, athletics. Ten? No. She stays up. A, yeah. Darn it. Okay. And she does make both of her concentration checks Darn for her it. invisibility. <laughs> I'm gonna get hit in the back of the head again, aren't I? So she's still invisible, right? She is. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, that was Pluto. So the Mephits. There is one Mephit remaining that latches itself onto Pluto's back. Ah. And claws at you, Pluto. Getting a fifteen against your AC? Uh, no good. No. Okay. Go back to the top then with Veo. I see all this commotion happening, and I <laughs> want to aim at the big guy because I don't want my friends to get hit again. So I'm going to take my two shots. I'm going to cast Sever Strike again, second time. Mm -hmm. That way I get that advantage. So first shot. Uh, 20. That is a hit. Yes. Yep, yep. Against the big elemental. The big elemental. Yeah. Twenty-seven damage. Oh, it's amazing. Yes. Do you have a magical weapon? No. I do not. Okay. Yeah. It seems that its magical nature has blunted the damage dealt. Let's use my magical arrows. Oh yeah. Can I tell? Can I tell this that it's because he's magical? You can. You can see this that. Something, it, it is a creature of magic. I then decide on my second shot. I have five magical arrows. I want to use one. Okay. Let's see if I hit. Twelve. Unfortunately, the oh. arrow sails past. We'll go get it after. We'll go get yeah, it after. If we survive. Okay. Yeah. Um, missing that, I duck back around the corner. Okay. Lenneth she grabs the corner of her cloak pulls it up around her and disappears in a puff of smoke no and this time I adjust my and glasses as she, she does so is she do in another you just hear hear the words you can freeze to death in there Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Automatic You're good at those. doors, my one weakness. <laughs> You're fine. 12. Which side of the doors do you want to be on? <laughs> <laughs> Save Pluto! The inside. Oh, keep I'm going to regret warm. that with keep me warm. <laughs> The doors slams shut, and quite suddenly, a wall of ice appears in front of the doors. There, you can see this from the other side as well. I'm like, uh, uh, are we still in initiative? You are indeed, because this elemental is still there. Oh, it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. I jump into the room, see this freeze over, <laughs> and like holding all my wounds, I turn to you, Pluto, and I'm just like, I'm here for you, bud. <laughs> We got this, right? <laughs> I can't find her. And I'm like trying to use my glasses. <laughs> like I'm, doing my, I'm like, where did she go? <laughs> I'm feeling a little woozy. If you could, I don't know, kill some things. I'll try. <laughs> I'm outside just like I was in a really intense position. Now I'm like, so now, what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So she just poofed. Yeah. And the door slammed shut and iced over. She's so rude. <laughs> I don't like her. I, your mom, yeah, worst first impression. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe she's having a bad Sebastian, day. Sebastian, it's your turn. Like, what are you gonna do? I'm super not impressed. Mm, I, I don't see any way to get past this guy without him getting an opportunity attack, right? You're five feet away from him. Um, if I move around him, am I close enough to grab Pluto without leaving his range? You could move into his reach and stay in his reach while moving around him, yes. Could I grab Pluto and Thunderstep? Yes, you can. Can I Thunderstep outside of the room? You can try. 
I try. Okay. Which where are you gonna go? Okay. I have to make constitution saving throws for them. Which they fail, you can roll the damage. Very nice move. Yeah. Yeah. I yes! You saved my life again! Well we'll see. I'm going to use Empowered Spell to re-roll <laughs> all of those. Okay. Oh, That's maybe. better. Uh, 20. 20 damage. Okay. Make a Charisma saving throw. This is your, this is your moment. 29. <laughs> okay. Nice roll. <laughs> so as you lift the two of you together to teleport o- away... You can almost feel the shadows of this realm trying to pull you apart as you move extra dimensionally, but you're able to maintain your sense of being and thrust you and Paluto desperately out on the ground across from the other side of the door. And then I collapse. (laughs) (laughs) It's been a hard day. How do they come into the scene? Um, the, The way we've been talking about Thunderstep is that it's almost like, you know that kind of sound right before a thunderstep where like the air kind of sucks in for a moment and then it's like a bam well they appear with like a bam because it's thunderstep so they just show up and just kind of collapse forward right right beside you veo i imagine like that i'm kind of like scratching my head around not really knowing what to do and all of a sudden it's just like bam beside veo and i'm just like (laughs) you jump don't do that anymore I like slowly get to my feet, start brushing off all the ice, pulling like icicles out of me, and I'm like, "Yeah, we were, we we did good. We did, <laughs> we we did all right in there, everybody. Good, good work good all job. around." Uh, I want to kill the snowman. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's my mom. So I, I for, don't know. I don't know if yeah, it's your mom. Yeah, I I doubt that fact. You know when like Queen Lenora's around, I was so sure it was her. I'm not sure at all. I'm not sure. That's your mom. And if she is, she's, she's being kind of mean. Do you need a healing potion? I need like... You have some, right? I need a healing bath. <laughs> Do you have any? Oh, don't worry about me. Are you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Do you guys want to go to the pub? Pub? <laughs> pub? Well, we're back at your... This is... We kind of claimed this as your place now. We all... We. I remember last time, we kind of assumed that this is now your place. So this room is sort of off limits for the time being. Yeah, we'll just put like an out of service yeah. sign on this <laughs> yeah, door. Just like a, um, is the door like locked? It's frozen, frozen over from the other side. She left. She disappeared. Do I, if I have the glasses and I look down the hallways, do I see her? You look down the hallways. I'm just gonna scan in my immediate back area. towards the set of of doors, and there are a fresh set of watery footprints and small chunks of snow going back down into the main foyer and up the stairs again. Uh, I'm going to tell these guys. You guys want to follow those? uh, We got to move quickly. Um, I'm I'm hunting a snow person. Okay, let's go. I'm just (laughs) going to pull this health potion out and uh, drink it. What's a potion of greater healing give us? Uh, 20 points back. I'm going to drink one. Okay. I am also going to drink one. How many points, sir? Uh, the greater ones are 20. Nice. All right. And then uh, let's uh, let's keep up the pursuit. Okay. So we're like running and chugging and I'm, potions. And I'm leading with the, with the glasses. So I'm doing like the... Oh, and I left my magic arrow behind. Can we just oh, assume d- we'll get that the, it, uh, the greater <laughs> healing potions come in like a you know like a, a Gatorade spray bottle so that we can just be running and be like? Shh. Oh, oh no! One of those uh, camel packs where I have a little sipper that I can use <laughs> as I <laughs> hands free. Okay, good. <laughs> for cool. the for the fighter on the go. Oh, I rolled some really bad on that action surge. I rolled. <laughs> Two fours. Uh, brutal. And then she shielded, which... Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm following the footprints. Let's go find the frosty popsicle. We're coming after you. Okay. Lena! She's no longer Mama Carrot Top. No. She's no. Frosty popsicle. She's <laughs> Ice Mom. I, I don't know. 
<laughs> she's she's uh, a cold-hearted mom. Did you say she's cold as ice? Ooh, and I'm willing to sacrifice her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. We went there. Okay. We went there. Thanks. Okay. So, you're standing in the hallway. You've escaped this frigid room. What are you going to do? We're chasing the footprints. Let's Pursuing the footprints. footprints. Okay. Which way will you go then? Uh, after the footprints. Okay, so, um, so back up to the foyer to the to the main hall. Yep. Okay. And is it still fresh as we go? Like, is it still? Is they it they trip? are. You did not skip a beat, so you're you're moving quite quickly a- after. Um, Does and it show where they start? They they start at the end of the hallway. Oh, nice. So I didn't see her come out when she teleported because she's still invisible, right? I think so. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We need your uh, glasses for seeing. Mm-hmm. I got her. You got it. I'll uh, okay. follow me. Follow you me, Jackson you, Three. You le- You mean very one of cats? <laughs> no, the I didn't. Three crows are oh, on okay. the move. Okay, we'll start Let's this out later. Let's go, cats. <laughs> you lead the way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you lead the way. <laughs> A dramatic running scene. Mm-hmm. Me slowly falling behind. I'm just kind of like jogging along okay. with you because I'm like, I could go fast. Yeah, you, thank you for that. Thank you for do, pacing. You yeah, rush up back the, um, back to the hallway, back to the foyer, and back up the stairs, coming back up them to that large laboratory room where there were the two pillars converging in the glass sphere in the middle in which there is the clone of Leneth. Clone mom. The laboratory equipment is all scattered about, and it looks like someone has been rummaging through a bunch of the things in here, trying to grab something, pick up a few things, administer a few things, and you can see like splashes of water and ice all all over. The stairs then, the, the footprints then go... It went upstairs before. They go down this time. We, I, I go downstairs. Let's do it. And I keep running. Don't run on stairs. It's dangerous. Oh, and slippery. Yeah. Slippery when wet. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we, we continue the pursuit. Okay. Okay. You rush down the stairs. This time coming to... Once again, another cube-shaped chamber, just like before. As you come down the stairs, they go down to a landing, and then up, and then again. And again, it's almost an identical size and shape, these rooms that are approximately 60 feet wide and, and long and 60 feet high, perfect cubes. And the this room, however, has been outfitted quite differently from some of the other ones that you've seen before. Let me just pull up my notes here. Really aesthetically pleasing house, though. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I like the... Just needs a coat of paint. Yeah, other yeah. than all the scary shadow monsters and ice. We're going to change the lighting aesthetic. <laughs> Probably <laughs> feng shui. Like a in nice here. furnace in here. Mm, yeah, smart. Some especially nice in that last places. room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just... <laughs> needs, a, needs a good fireplace. <laughs> you need an HVAC guy to come in and just kind of... Get a quote. Get a good <laughs> quote. Maybe hang some paintings on the wall. It's pretty yeah. pretty bleak in here. Okay, so we went downstairs this time. The only problem with making a, a four-dimensional dungeon is that you forget the order everything is in. <laughs> um, okay. So we went up, and then they went down again, which means that you are in... So. We're having the same conversation. We're like, we yeah, it's like and up and, and down. Like, yeah, we went yeah. up and down. We're and just sure we... as lost. <laughs> okay. You never know where these staircases are going to end up. Somebody draw a map. Mm hmm. <laughs> I, tra- I did draw a map. I pull so... out and it just has like lines going nowhere and it's like <laughs> just question marks everywhere. I can follow that. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so before you would pass through a library and a summoning chamber and now you come into 
a room that has been outfitted almost like a small barracks. There are several, about six beds in this room, each of which has a awning or a kind of room divider or bookshelves separating them each from each other. Each of the, the light in this room is quite a bit lower than everywhere else. And it seems like the, each of the individual sections of this room have been isolated off so that there's a little bit of privacy, almost as, as if some people could come in here to study or stay as guests, but the accoutrements are very Spartan otherwise. And the footprints lead in here? The, the footprints cross the room and then go down the stairs on the opposite side. Let's go. Let's do it. We're uh, barely taking time. And there's another set of stairs. There's three sets of stairs in this room. One that go- the ones that you came through, another set that go up, and another set that go down. So I'm, I, I'm kind of like more or less tracking the ground for the footprints than I am paying even really much attention okay. to the surrounding. I'm paying a little bit of attention, and I turn to the other two. I'm like, are we keeping track of how to get back? Okay, good. No, it's like that. It's, I picture that painting with all the stairs where <laughs> eventually it'll lead we're back just kind of mm-hmm. like, or like a, a Scooby-Doo thing where we're running through doors <laughs> and we're just running back and forth along the same hallway. So which, uh, just so we know, which stairs are we following? So you said there's three. Mm-hmm. Um, are they all going down? Are they all going up? Are they going to You directions? came down this set of stairs. Yep. And then there's a, another set of stairs on the north wall going up and on the su- and uh, opposite you going down again. So you're going across so you came down and now you're going down again. We're going yeah, across the room again. and then down. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Up down down. I'm going to keep trying. Okay, I like that. Yes. Good Veo. Okay. You're a, you're a guide. Yeah. Okay. What do I do? As uh, as you come to the base of the staircase Who's leading? Pluto. Uh, Pluto. Me. Pluto, you got one chance to make a perception check. Uh, this is my forte. Yeah. I say confidently without even looking at my stats. <laughs> perception? Mm-hmm. Receive. 15. 15? Okay. Oh, and just kidding. Uh, yes, 15, because I am exhausted still, so all my ability checks. I see. Checks. Okay, okay. You hear, as you come towards the, the, the top of the stairs, you hear for a split second someone uttering arcane words. From? From the, bot- from the landing of the stairs. So someone that you can't see, you look down, there, the snow stops, there's a large puddle, and you can hear someone uttering some arcane words under their breath. And I can't see. You can't see, but uh, you can hear them. I'm going to do a power slide. Okay. So I to go down the stairs, I'm going to do like a feet first slide down. I don't even know if this is going to work. Okay. <laughs> um, to try to it, inherently dodge okay. this uh, magical attack. Alrighty, uh, we'll keep the initiative order uh, as before. So we'll we'll just say we're back from from your turn. As you come down the the these stairs. Oh, and I'm gonna yell, "Watch out!" You go wa- watch out. So you've kind of hit the deck. You're at the b- bottom of the stairs. You can hear these arcane words about about to happen. Vale, what are you gonna do? I stop on the stairs. At the top of the stairs. Yeah. Okay. So, there's a a split moment where the Leneth comes into view one more w- once again as she completes casting Cone of Cold. Woo! And it fires. This blast of cold goes up the stairs, which Sebastian, I I, I don't think I've had a chance to do anything. Yeah, Sebastian, how far back are you? Would you be then? I'm. I was probably in the back of the three of us. Okay. So if she's at the top of the stairs, I'm just past it. So I need constitution, constitution saving throws because the cone of cold blasts up the stairs. 
I'm going to give advantage on the saving throw to Pluto and Sebastian because Pluto, you did the power slide underneath and Sebastian, you're too, so far back. But Vejo, you're basically catching the cone of cold in your face. Constitution? Con? Yes, please. Twelve. I think I got a little bit... You said with advantage? Mm-hmm. Twenty-five. Twenty-five? Okay. Twenty-three. Twenty-three? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's see here. So... I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking for a 21. <laughs> oh. What'd you get? 25. 25? 23. Okay, so both of you succeed your saving throws against the Cone of Cold. Nope. <laughs> uh, Veo, you do not. I'm so sorry. I'm um, so sorry. It's going to be bad. <laughs> Veo, you're going to be a cold kitty. Uh, popsicle. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's 40 points of cold damage. And half for the two of you that made saving throws. I'm gonna use Shield Master Evasion and absorb it with my use my reaction and absorb it with my shield. Okay. There goes that potion I took. I still have one more hit point than you. <laughs> After taking a straight on Oh my god. <laughs> You're not only our muscle, but our tank and our guide and our <laughs> You are the team. We're just we just come We're here along for the ride. For the ride. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> she, as she finishes casting the spell, she breathes deeply and scurries down the stairs. <laughs> Do I get a shot at her? You're power sliding down the stairs, and I use the shield as you like just a... pulled the shield up. I, I, I'm going to say that because you were focusing on defense as you power slowed, slowed down, you're not close enough to her to make the attack. Can I huck a javelin at her? On your turn, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yep. Because I'm going to do that. She continues to run down the stairs. Sebastian, it's your turn. Can I still see her? She's gone down the stairs. You'll have to run, run down. <laughs> I run after, after her. Okay. So I move 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Can I see her? You can, yep. You okay. can see her at the base of the stairs. She's She's run down. You can see that she's coming into another cube-like like room, but you can't quite see what the rest of the features of the room are. I get to the bottom of the stairs, and I just yell, Stay put! And I cast a web. Nice. Okay. Woo! She gets a eight. <laughs> <laughs> the web, like, just sticks all around her. Okay. Putting her to the ground, and she's just trapped there. Alrighty. Yes. Pluto, we go over to you. Um, I recover from my power slide. Mm -hmm. uh, can I get to her? Is she yes. far enough away? Uh, you'd have to use double move to get all the way to her, unless you want to. If you want to get right up to her, I answer. will. I, I'll dash. Okay. And uh, so you come to the base of the stairs and find that you're back in the lab room. <sighs> <laughs> Your house is freaky, man. <laughs> is it the same lab room? Or yeah, I yeah. We're, we'll have to find a map or a guide or something at some at point. Least some sort of like. Yeah. like now let's just deal no way with an elevator would work in this place. With snow, mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I want to get ahead of her. Like I want to get on the other side of the web. She sure she's yeah. she's restrained in the web. She's struggling uh, against it, but she is trapped in there. And I'm gonna give her a, a command like, uh, stop. Okay. Top with Veil. So I'm a bit uh, frost bitten on my face. Um, how many feet is it down the stairs? Or I can see her. In total, from the top of the stairs to the next set of stairs, from one room to the next, mm -hmm. 60 feet of movement is required. No. Okay. Um, I am going to um, use my feline agility. Okay. Uh, which doubles my speed. And I'm going to book it down the stairs to where I can see her. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take two shots at her. All right. You got advantage because she's restrained. Uh, 13. Even restrained in place, mm -hmm. the magical field of force protecting her shields her from the blow. 
Uh, I'm going to take a second shot with mm -hmm. a magical arrow. Okay. Nope. Ten. Sorry, Vaya. Nope. I am not aiming true today. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You did just get, like, blasted in the face with all this snow and ice. Yeah. I literally have icicles, like, coming mm -hmm. off of my face. I'm like, <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> shooting me. I, I don't blame you. I'm not holding it against you. You're, you're having a rough time right shoot now. Him, I can you and I are like limping all over the place. I'll it's be okay. Mm -hmm. In she is we, we now go to Lena. She's restrained in the webs and Sebastian you can see you see an expression on her face that you recognize as that frustrated expression, but also like a look of horror. The look of a mage who's out of spell slots. <laughs> Did you just <laughs> smile? <laughs> <laughs> um, and as she struggles against the web, she just fires a chill touch at Paluto. Hi. Getting a 28 to hit. Oh. Ow. <laughs> hey. <laughs> She's so cold. Pluto, that's going to be 17 points of necrotic damage. Ah. <laughs> if I didn't do that reaction thing, I'd be so down. Right? Uh, and you can't regain hit points till this till the end of her next turn. Ah, I was being I was going to like restrain her. Oh, I'm so stabbing her. Like it's not even. It's not even Get her. Dead. Sebastian, you're up. Uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to use my last three sorcery points to gain back a second level spell slot. I'm going to walk towards the web. <laughs> and I say, you know what, Mom? You're fired. <laughs> and I cast Scorching Ray. Okay. <laughs> you have advantage on all the attacks. <laughs> 24 that hits I'm just gonna do all three and see if they hit and then we'll calculate the damage all her fire she's in the web actually I'm gonna roll one more of those no it didn't matter okay elven accuracy oh, um crit oh, crit <laughs> oh my god uh, there it is and the third one Twenty-seven. That hits as well. Wow. So this is a, a crit and two hits. Crit and so two hits. So eight d six fire damage total. Uh, yep. 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 Fourteen for the crit. Gross. Nice. Eighteen more. Uh, very well done. The three scorching rays pierce right through her body, melting away her flesh like snow and leaving behind that icy residue after snow has been melting for too long. And as the flames rip through the rest of the webs, she melts, leaving behind only the cloak, her wand, and a puddle of water. I reach down and I pick up the wand. This was a crappy reunion anyway. I put it in my pocket. Yeah, not 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 how I thought this was going to go. I don't even like part of me wanted to question her, but I I don't she she almost killed me. She almost killed you. She yelled at me. She <laughs> Kind of hurt Pluto a little. Yeah. Emotionally, I'm sure Pluto's having a rough time. I am a little shaken, and I hope this doesn't affect when I re meet your real mom, if she's still alive. Yeah. Well, I, hope, I don't know. I hope this doesn't leave a bad taste in my... I'm just wondering mouth. about what that clone is. I mean, we, we might have better luck with the clone, but this <laughs> this wasn't my mom. No. If we open this other one, and it's the same reaction, I'm going to be so mad. Me too. I'm going to be disappointed. I'm not even mad. Yeah, yeah. I'm just point, disappointed. At that point. Sebastian, you can make an arcana check. Twenty-eight. 
22. Okay. With what's just happened and what you saw in the other room, you can very easily deduce, given the capabilities of what you've seen around you, this definitely wasn't your mother. It was a simulacrum spell of her. Which might explain why it doesn't recognize you. Because simulacrum spells, simulacrums can't regain their spell slots. And they also can't form new experiences or memories. So this simulacrum might have been created before you were even born. Seemingly before she met my father at all. Yeah, she didn't know. Because she didn't know uh, Tobias either. Wow. Does it... And before manners were invented. Also, (laughs) Does a simulacrum Uh, carry like the same personality (laughs) as its creator? Probably. Mm, Ouch. Yeah. Mm. But existence is pain for a simulacra, and if she's existed for, if this simulacra existed for like 30 years, it, or even longer, also given that it casts so few spells, like it was tapped out. We put it out of its misery. Uh, anything cool about the wand? The wand is a blackened wand with the expression of a howling face upon the end of it. The wand is magical, as is the cloak. Cool. I pick up the cloak as well. Kind of mm-hmm. ring it out. Um, as, you, as you ring it out, the you can see that the cloak has been tattered and waterlogged, but it would have been, at one point, this very fine, almost velvet red cloak had it seems like age has really worn it down but it is magical in nature as is the wand and if you take some time you'll be able to identify them cool i uh i put the cloak in my bag of holding for now and the wand is in my pocket okay do wands get holsters like can i have a cool wand holster i don't know we'll work on that okay i'm feeling a little bit run down um there are some beds or down, or maybe sideways. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. It's like I kind of were there. <laughs> we we just we just killed simulacrum. Mu- wait, simulacrum mum. Simulacrum mum. There. Got yep. It. Yep. We found it. <laughs> we, yep. we took the scenic route, um, but we got there. <laughs> but I still feel like we don't have any answers. Like, where are we? Why was this created? What's going on? So I, I mean, I'm a little spent here. My magic energies are running pretty low. Um, I feel about three healthy. (laughs) If you had to put a, if you had to put a number on it, on like between, between between zero to 37, I'd say I'm about a three. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel you. I'm on those lines. I'm, uh, do we like, we can just go have a nap in the, in the, in the guest room. We can do like we did with the Umber Hulk and take watches. I mean, also, I mean, if we go back out the mirror, we know where this place is. We can, like, go rest and then come back. Oh, yeah. That's a good um, idea. What about the ice elemental? He's frozen in a fridge room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you left him in the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be, be He'll be okay. He'll be good. He'll be good. Now that, now that its master is dead, maybe it, uh, maybe it needs a new one. But we're not going to test that yet. I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What will you do? What do you, What do you guys think? What do you think? My plan <sighs> was to just go upstairs, downstairs, wherever to those beds, and we can stay in here. What time is it? What time is it? it I don't have yeah, a you, sundial on my wrist. Yeah. <laughs> this is a featureless realm of inky black darkness. There is nothing to give you any sense of the passage of time. Mm, all right. I think we should go check out. But we could also leave. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking that I don't. There was a, a demon, uh, <laughs> you know, summoning spell upstairs oh, that's yeah. randomly popping oh, out yeah. demons. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily feel comfortable resting while that's should happening. Should we just go like, can we go give it a quick peek? <laughs> I'm going to go take a quick look. Like do one of those like 
around the, the around the corner of like the edge just to see if can it's all still... three of us like one two three around the corner? yeah yeah okay just to take a quick look just to see if it's still <laughs> so you it's go all... up you all like peek around the corner <laughs> and you see that the the one room which is only outfitted as the summoning chamber just continues to flicker with as the the magic swells up with a large crackle and boom a demon appears and it just looks up like really confused for about three seconds before disappearing again although what you start to realize is happening after like just watching it for about a minute is it seems to be doing this to not an infinite number of demons but about the same five or six <laughs> demons <laughs> i just wave at them hi <laughs> oops every time they come by i'm just like i'm veo <laughs> And then I, once in a while, as you watch it go by, the the demon it cycles through a few a few new ones. But it seems to be like there's this particular demon that looks like he's got an insectoid head, and he's all covered with like an icy sheen. And he's got a pitchfork, and he's just like prepared for things. And when he appears, he charges towards you and then disappears again. <laughs> and does he always reset back to the middle of the summoning yeah. circle? Oh, great! He's never this is get out. this is perfect. <laughs> this is like. Get some popcorn. Or yeah, this is my entertainment room. I'm gonna like set up a chair and just like sit here and like wave at the demons. <laughs> they're gonna hate you at some point. Uh, yeah, at some point they're gonna break out, and that's gonna be the worst. Yeah. But for now. But for now. So that's for future Sebastian yeah. to deal with. So I don't know what else is here other than those demons, and I don't feel safe just mm -hmm. in case they get out. I don't want to be rampaged by a demon in my sleep. Oh, um, fair. Um, but I also don't necessarily want to stay in your creepy old house. <laughs> no, no. I was thinking like we could literally go back to the new crow house. Yeah. Go to bed. Yeah. Come back in the morning. That sounds good. We uh, could ask your dad some yeah, questions. Yeah, maybe, maybe we can like inquire. About his knowledge of this mirror. And be like, yeah, so here's a wand. Here's a cloak. We killed fake mom. We fought some demons. Uh, there's a whole world behind that mirror. Uh, what up? What? Did you know about this? Yeah, we need to go ask. Pop, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe we do have to. And this other clone room, is it? Is it? With my expert knowledge of how magic works, <laughs> um, go ahead, Pluto. Does go it look. look inactive? Active? Does it? The apparatus is thrumming with power, oh. but it seems to be in a holding pattern. Hmm. Because we should maybe wait to open that one. But maybe we can open it and be like, we're your master. <laughs> Clone mom might be much nicer than Simulac mom. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. true. You could have a real mom. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for now is. Mm -hmm. It's a bright and dark, sunny day. Da, 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 da. And you can have like, you can play with her, and have hang, hang out and stuff. You can go on Skip picnics. In yeah. the fields. Mm -hmm. Flowers. I can, we could can be a real family. But there's no sun, unfortunately, in Drakenheim. So, yeah. I mean. It's right. gonna be, It'll be in the rain. super sad. Yeah. <laughs> Still. Okay. <laughs> so you'll beat a retreat mm -hmm. and head back to Emberwood Village. But we, I want to make sure we grab the stuff off the statue before we leave. The the cape. The, yeah, the stuff that we yes. need to okay. we come need and to. go. Yeah. Obviously. And I have my glasses on. Yeah. Glasses. Sure. Glasses. So you you take the uh, the the amulet, the cloak, and the glasses. And leave the room. Okay. Okay. The weird pocket dimension. As you leave and step out of the mirror and back into the real world, sensibly, you probably spent the better part of an hour or two in that world. But as you step back out outside... It, uh, it looked back up over to the, where the sun is, because you can still kind of tell, even though it's overcast, like, Drakenheim proper, the sun doesn't come out, but the day, looking around, because you came in here around the mid-afternoon, and Emberwood Village tends to pick up by the afternoon, it seems like barely any time has passed at all. Uh, I mean, that's a good thing. That means that us leaving, resting, and going back in. Every time we're in there, it's just... It means I've lost two hours of my life. Or... Don't stay do I feel long. two hours older? Oh, God. I have so many questions. Yeah, don't stay in there for too long, I feel like. 
No, but if I stay in there, mm. do do I age? Oh, we need to do experiments, guys. Yeah. I have another idea. Yeah. What if we just took the mirror? What if it breaks the magic? I don't know how that works. Either do I. I'm just a little bit. I don't. I want to be able to get back in to find clone carrot top, Mama. I'm I'm worried about breaking it, but I I wonder if, if it's we just put it in the bag of holding and we have like a can it fit in there? Anything can fit in there. You gotta just Maybe. jam it. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a moving truck, you know. You just gotta organize it properly. Yeah. Um, but like maybe moving the mirror to a safer location. Is it who's it safer for though? Is it safer for everyone? Well, like well, it being in an abandoned house that kids break into to like, I don't know. It's like protected in its things. secrecy a little bit because no one really knows. So yeah. that has the, there's the up there. That, I mean, it's been here for how many years and it's fine. And they also need the things, right? I think we in. need to be really careful about how we. The, I I just wanted to mm. throw it out, not as a as a do it now, but it's yeah. maybe something to we can sleep on that where yeah. we could eventually like take the mirror if we needed to and tr or try it. Yeah. If we understand it more. Definitely. I would say like let's sleep on it yeah. and then come back and make decisions after we. Was it covered when we got here? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. let's, maybe we should cover. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Just put like a blanket over take it or one a of sheet. the sheets. Yeah. We don't want anybody seeing themselves dead in the mirror. Yeah, it's uh, okay. shocking. So you're going to cover the mirror and leave? Yep. Okay. You head back through the village and return to the small crow house. <laughs> the little crow house and the big old crow house. Little new crow house, big old crow house. As you come back in... You find that Moira is still there, tending about things. She's with your sisters. Your brother and your father, Sebastian, have gone off to work at the smithy. Eldrick and River are nowhere to be seen. The cart is still parked at the front. But beyond that, the Moira greets you and she's like, Back soon. Uh, we had a few uh, chilling encounters. Oh, and, uh, we needed a we needed just to to recuperate. You all look terrible. Are you hurt? Yes, yes. <laughs> a little bit. I like open up the cloak and there's just like icicle shards sticking out of me and there's like blood and ice. She and she frost. she goes up to she's, looks like you've all got frostbite. And she she starts barking orders to your sisters, saying, "Go and go and fetch some hot water and a few extra blankets." Do you have any tea? She says to to your older sister, "Get a kettle boiling." Thank you. And says, "What? Ha you went to your old house?" Yeah, it's uh, it's not the most pleasant place I've ever been. Well, take a rest. We'll tend to you. I'm not sure when Eldrick and River said they would be back, but they said they had some business to tend to. Hopefully, they'll be back soon and they can help you or something. But in the meantime, you sit right down. Your sister will get you some tea and we'll see to that frostbite. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's warm up. Yeah. And I just take some of my salmon that river just given me and i just like start eating it i need some comfort food here because i'm just like <laughs> i, I so imagine cold. i'm just like sitting by the fireplace with a blanket over my shoulders just sipping my tea super so do you all t intend to take a short rest or a long rest if we from a time perspective if we do a short rest we could go back yeah but then we would be doing it at night I also um a long rest puts us further back. I don't but it is spell safer. slots on a short rest, do I? No. I'm I'm virtually useless unless I take a long rest. So then uh I think we need a long rest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because it's like mid afternoon. It, it was a rough go, I think. Yeah. I think this is more than an hour of healing. I think this like requires a nap. Sure. 
Sure. Uh, before we delve into the ruins again, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for, for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories we use, such as the initiative tracker that you've seen. Uh, check him out. He makes amazing stuff. And to Tabletop Audio for the great ambient music you're hearing. And finally, 100 Years Boar for the amazing narration in our introduction video. If you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And of course, a shout out to Skull Splitter Dice for sponsoring tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim. Uh, we've been rolling some of the really fantastic metal dice uh, here this evening. I got two crits. Yeah, uh, yeah, they have serviced up some great crits, although this, this site hasn't done too well for you tonight, Jill. <laughs> Okay, they gave me lots of crits last week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, dice can... giveth and the dice taketh away. That just means they're fair. They're fair. However, we are giving away a free set of Skull Splitter dice to one of our lucky viewers every month. If you follow us on Twitch or subscribe to us on YouTube, all you have to do is follow the links in the description below to confirm your entry. As it is now February, our second round of the contest is now open. We'll be announcing January's winner probably sometime later this week. You can also nab a plus one bonus, an extra entry into the contest if you also follow us on Twitter. If you want to pick up a setup of the dice now instead, head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com, use that discount code DDUDES, and that'll get you 15% off your first order. Nerds can't have enough dice for this game, so it really is, and having an awesome yeah. set of trustworthy dice is totally worth it. Now, before the break, we, our heroes had left the mirror dimension and had returned to Emberwood Village where Moira and the little crows had tended to their frost burn after their encounter with Leneth's leftover simulacra or the simulacrum <laughs> simulacrum I, that's hard to say <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Right? yeah yeah I'm glad she's dead now <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to say it ever again. <laughs> so, spending the time to rest up. The afternoon and into the evening passed rather uneventfully with tea and some snacks from Moira and some light chatter from the children. Do you tell Moira or your siblings what you've encountered so far? No. No, that... I quietly and subtly hint that she's the better mom by constantly thanking her, <laughs> like just to make it known that she's the better version of the I ones I just imagine I you being like, you're such a good mom to <laughs> Sebastian. And then like look at me and be like, yeah, yeah. She, she smiles and she says, well, that's what family's all about. Taking care of each other, understanding each other, really listening to each other. Not jumping to conclusions or assuming the worst in people, but seeing the good in everybody. And then I'll like look at her through the glasses to make sure she's not a snow person. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm always just kind of checking. Like, okay. you know, the first time that you met me, you were you were immediately kind to me, and I'm glad that you didn't like blast me in the face with snow or ice. It was really kind of you <laughs> to not do that. It's like, why do you keep bringing that? Up? So I'm really happy you're not blowing ice in my yeah. face. <laughs> I'm the true Mama Carrot Top. We appreciate everything you do for us. She she smiles and says, well, who would I be to leave you out in the cold? <laughs> ah, nice. Well oh. done. Well done. Well done. Yes. I'm so happy. <laughs> I would yeah. say... I uh, would uh, Emma and <laughs> Sybil try to ask, ask questions of like, did you see the creepy ghost in the house? Yes. Yeah. And what happened? It was scary. There was a dog. It ate me in my dreams and almost in reality. <laughs> you tell this to your sister? Yes. <laughs> they they just stare wide eyed at you. They're like, that's so cool. <laughs> never go in that yeah, house. Yeah, never go never, in that house. Ever, please, ever. ever go in that house. I'm no. going to tell everyone that my brother fought the ghost of the haunted house. And he killed that ghost, and he is a hero. You can't kill a ghost. They're already dead. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> As the evening passes, Tobias comes home with Peter, and he sees you up and down. He says, You went into the house? Yeah. What happened in there? Whatever you saw? I don't want to know about it. 
it's part of my life that's gone. I feel like we need answers, though. I think we can get answers from um, Eldrick and River more so than from my dad. My dad didn't even know about this whole side of... He didn't know about the mirror? No. I mean, he knew that there was a mirror. He stops and he says, You found... What are you doing with my dead wife's glasses? (laughs) (laughs) Oh. (laughs) You you said you didn't want to know. Dad. She she just... She just always wore those glasses. Just... I thought she looked cute in them. Do you think Do I you look cute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, pardon, sir. Um, <laughs> pardon, Mr. Tobias. <laughs> I will not ask you if <laughs> I look cute in your dead wife's glasses. Um, <laughs> what I will, <laughs> what I will <laughs> converse with you. <laughs> Can we change the subject? Can we just get the gears rolling a different way? <laughs> <laughs> oh, these old things? <laughs> I put my helmet down. <laughs> Can you still see them? He he sighs and he says, "They're nothing but relics of the past. You can keep them." Oh, thank you. They're for hunting snow angels. He gives you a very confused look. <laughs> I think it's time for us to leave. Yeah, I think we. Well, you know, we've rested up. We've gotten fed. <laughs> well, warmed. My nose isn't so cold anymore. Well, Dad, if you ever do want to hear about what went on in that old house, I'm sure there'll be stories of the incidents that occurred there. Uh, it was years before people stopped talking about the night you were born. Oh, I know. I remember. The stories. I don't remember being born. That's ridiculous. Yep. But uh, take care of yourself. <laughs> yep. Are you leaving town now, or uh, we actually might pop back <laughs> to the house? Don't tell. Them. No, oh. we're just we're gonna go um, for a walk. Schmooze. Uh, we <clears throat> we did find something in the house. I know you don't want to know about it, but um, it does require further investigation. But. Um, we did want to come back here just to just to have some tea and rest up and um, mull over the things that we had uh, found. But there's still a little bit more research that needs to be done. But it actually is very important and could be very helpful for our adventures in Drakenheim. So I apologize that we're going digging through the past, but it has proven mm-hmm. fruitful for us. And um, I'll try to let the past stay in the past, but... I won't bother you with what we've discovered. I'm going to make a wand gesture to you. We're not going to talk about Okay. It. Okay. Uh, after completing your rest, the <laughs> items that you've found, going over the, the, the few items that you have recovered, taking the time, the cloak... And the, the the first cloak that you found in the house and the locket and the glasses all have magic, but it seems like the magic has been fading rapidly since you brought them out of the house. Whatever was powering the, those things it, it is fading out. They're still holding their magic to them, but they appear to be losing some potency now. The cape and the wand, though, that you found on Leneth's simulacra are still quite magical. Her her cape is a cape of the mountebank. And once per day, you can step into the cape and cast Dimension Door and disappear in a puff of smoke. Wow. Um, okay, so discovering that, I have the ability to thunderstep. Can I try it? Do you want to teleport? Yeah. Is that okay? I can move really quickly already. It's not but, that I can teleport, but I can move. But around. you're so fast. Yeah. Uh, you might look really cool with a red cape on. Is it Is Caspia it, colors? I mean, it's not. You're bl- you're blue, right? Your stuff's blue. Blue and gold. Are you willing to wear a red cape? I'll be honest. I mean, your dad made my armor right now. I've really lost a lot of my, and I'm wearing like boots I found off a gnome that I murdered. So, here you go. Thank you. Nice. 
I mm. really appreciate it. It looks quite dashing on you, actually. <laughs> I'm wearing a lot of your mom's old stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing armor made by my dad, my mom's glasses, and my mom's old cloak. Getting more Drakenheim by the day. I'm, uh, am I part of the family? Am I part of the crows? No. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Hashtag noted. And um, what about this obsidian wand? Um, this obsidian wand has a screaming skull-like face in it, um, and it has it is a wand of fear. Uh, it is a rare wand that requires attunement. Uh, it has seven charges. And while holding the wand, you can use an action to expend one charge and command another creature to flee or grovel as per the command spell. Uh, or while holding the wand, you can use an action, expend two charges, and to cause it to emit a cone of amber light. And each creature in, in the cone must make a wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you for one minute. And while the creature is frightened in this way, it must spend its turns trying to move as far away from as possible as you can, and it can't willingly move closer to you. It also can't take reactions. Sweet. I'm a wand guy now. I never thought I'd be a wand guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like, as we're like leaving, I'm like holding it out and be like, <laughs> yes. Like just trying it. Practicing? Yeah. I can cast all my spells from this. This is this is pretty cool. Yeah, you can use point? it as an arcane focus for your spells as well. Guys, do I look cool? Do I look cool holding out a wand? No. Okay, wait. wait. <laughs> do I go more with like the, the, the firm grip or do I go with like an elegant like, you know? <laughs> no? no? I'm sure you'll naturally discover your form. I was going to say. All right. You'll figure it out. This is going to take a while, but I, I got to find my like wand groove, you know? All right. We're we'll going to work on that. You'll figure it out. Cool. <laughs> we as we laugh, like <laughs> I'm, I'm trying just to the keep whole way super... walking back to the house. I'm just trying to keep a super serious face, but I'm just like <laughs> every time I'm just like sure. So as you as you walk back to the house, you're just practicing. Like... I'm practicing like different wand poses. Like, do I hold it straight out? Do I hold it like ha? Oh. <laughs> And have you figured out where you hold it? Do you store it? Do you like pull it out of your clothes? Do I like flip it out of my clothes? I don't know. I'm like practice like twirling it on my finger. I'm like, ah. and and like I see you dropping it sometimes. Yeah, I like yeah, you're, you're still <laughs> used. You're not used to the wand. <laughs> and you just hear me like mumble things like, "I'm a wand guy, got a wand," and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, "My, my friend, Mr. Wand. <sighs> Mr. Wand, nice to meet you. I'm Wand." Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Want to know where I got this one? <laughs> Ever. Wa nope. Damn it. It's a wonderful wand you have there. It's, it's a the wonderful life. Wand. <laughs> uh, I'm like, you guys now realize that all my one-liners, I go through about a hundred bad ones before I find one that works. And even those aren't that good. So. <laughs> Uh, how do I do that? What's the the cloak? Is it a robe? It or is a, cloak? a cape of the mountebank. Mountebank. Now, can we go over the the nuances between a cape and a cloak? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna start that debate now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the properties of my cape. It, yes, it it is a cape of the mountebank. Yeah. Gracias. Cool. So you proceed back to the dilapidated Crow Manor, the house on the wrong side of town with the wrought iron fencing and the high steepled rooftops, the boarded up windows, which you broke down the door before as well. Sebastian, it feels as you approach that aura of unease around here still exists but it's a calmer one and as you head back through the house putting on the artifacts you can almost feel like their magic is being pulled back into them as they get closer to the mirror again and you step through the mirror 
into the dimension beyond. And once again, as you come down that long hallway, you can hear the pitter-patter of that hound following you through the halls. Oh, I forgot about that. I want to try to pet it. I'm not afraid of dogs. I have a wand. <laughs> Fetch. Pluto, keep it away from me. It, um, as you reach, reach out to touch it, you can all hear the growling <laughs> as you reach towards it. Oh, sorry. There you Hey, boy. We can actually see the hound. No, only Pluto wearing the glasses can see it. Okay, I just say, hey, boy. Hey, boy. Pluto, where is it? Show it to me. I'm I'm not feeling cool with this. Is it, is it right next to me? Is it behind me? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Is it It's. Is it just kind of following us and sniffing us again? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's not here anymore, guys. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. Everything's fine. Which way will you go now? What way have we not explored? I'm a little... I'm a little disoriented. My map, once again, just has question marks and lines <laughs> in various directions and the words up and down about 20 times. Going over all the different ways, it seems like there is, from what you can recall, and I'll help summarize this for you because there are a lot of different directions. You haven't gone up the staircase in the barracks room. Also, you did go through the double doors in the main foyer. But then you went back the other way. There's another set of double doors we at the end of that back. hallway. Yeah. That could be interesting. Because we were following the footsteps of the and thing. And then they, they came back, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think that would be a cool Yeah, that seems like that a way? logical... Yeah. It's like if we get a new house, we got a, we, a new place, you got to like check out all the different little, little nooks and crannies. Let's see how many closets you have. How many more, <laughs> how many more dungeon summoning... Demon summoning things. Yeah. If we find another demon summoning circle, should we not break it? Uh, we'll cross that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like the last one worked out pretty well. Yeah, actually, if anything, yeah, we created some sort of a uh, fun hazard. Anomaly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> Anomaly. An incident. So you will open. Uh, so to get back that way, you'll need to leave your. Do you leave the equipment on the statue of Lena? Glasses. Yeah. Okay. The cloak and the. Okay. Thing. The halls now, the melted water that was around here is mostly gone now. Just a few droplets. Uh, almost just like water stains left on the floor. Has it been a day? It's like yeah. We, we, it's in like the morning. Mm-hmm. The next day, okay. Yep. I'm feeling much more confident being in here when I know there's not a crazy ice lady wandering around. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel a little calmer, a little warmer in my soul. Does it feel You're warmer? Hurt? I don't know. No. Oh. I, th- I think it's more just <laughs> an the whole place warm. still feels gloomy and hostile and cold. Hmm. 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 I mean, there could be other things in here that might kill us, but yeah, it's fair. Okay. Let's. Uh, so we go through the the big doors. Mm-hmm. And uh, is and there then, anything to hear or see? So beyond the great set of obsidian doors in the main foyer, there is a long, wide hallway pillared and with the same lights that were in the earlier hall those kind of black lights that were illuminating Mm -hmm. the hall which actually I think you shot out a few of these ones as well we've been breaking lights the hall ends in another set of obsidian doors set of 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 obsidian double doors Uh, I mean should we see if they're open (laughs) I guess that would be the the logical Mm -hmm. choice Mm -hmm. um who wants to push open the doors? I volunteer myself as tribute. Because you're the strongest. Yeah, I can't. I I can't open these doors. I'm not so nearly strong. Ah, enough. let me flex my muscles. Okay, in my so lady strong. robe. <laughs> <laughs> you dramatically push the doors open. Oh, oh, cool. And as you do, you can. The sound of rushing wind fills your ears. It's that sound of when you're in a speed, the same sound of when you're in a speeding vehicle of rushing and the windows are down, that rushing wind that being sucked out of the room almost. Because in this room, part of the wall has broken away on the north side. And what you can see in the, uh, on the north side of the room, it looks like there was once a pillar or the base of a statue which is only left behind 
shattered and broken remains as if the statue was blasted back into the wall and the wall opened up and it's just opening into that inky blackness of this shadowy realm and there's a rushing of wind and licking shadows filling this room that are dancing against the green orbs which illuminate the rest of the room the whole room is very different from the other rooms it's still made of the same obsidian um the same obsidian stone as the rest of the complex but intricate carvings have been created here it is a roughly rectangular room 60 feet wide but only 40 feet deep and the high ceiling still reaches up quite high as well ending in hard 90 degree corners but they there are obsidian carvings all up the room depicting shadowy figures clashing against each other in some sort of cosmic conflict there are skulls undead creatures shadows elemental forces of all of darkness and cold colliding with each other and on the south end of the room the you can see the mural kind of clashes and it appears to be in the middle point of the room where the doors open up the carvings almost form what looks like the two sides of a battle on one side the carvings are of frost and ice and wind and shadows and the shapes of flying screaming crows and ravens and flocks of birds and almost what look like the ghosts of elves or banshees and this force of ice shadow and shadow is clashing in the other carvings against macabre zombies lumbering creatures and skeletons and the south side of the room there is another pillar base pillar of a, of a great statue which is still in place perched on the statue is a massively obese creature that looks like the cross between an orangutan or a baboon but it has a massive distended belly in, in, and it's a carving it's an obsidian statue that almost looks like its intestines are spilling out from its guts and there's pustules all covering its its belly it's an intricate and lifelike almost like life carving it has big bat-like wings coming out of it and the head of a goat and cloven feet and it's perched on top and holding a great axe beside it in one hand and in its other hand it is holding a purple glowing crystal do i recognize this uh this figure like is it a, some is it meant to be a god or a demon yeah is it like an have i ever heard of it monster <sighs> the iconography is conflicting and strange give me an arcana check there's one last detail i, I must give as well spilling out from it it has eyes of crystal that are leaking a green goo almost like tears and they're coalescing driving down the obsidian and forming cracks in the floor in front of it that are forming this bubbling green liquid on the ground in front of you i only got a seven this creature you've heard of cosmic conflicts between gods and demons the forces of shadow and darkness are not always in alignment with one another they are not monolithic this is depicting a battle between two great forces of shadow a battle which ostensibly this goat baboon bat creature has won <clears throat> So which side am I on? Uh, is there like uh, in the at the base of it? Is there anything written? Is there any like language? There 
are the odd markings of runes describing everything in various forms and bastardized languages. What languages do you know? Uh, who? Uh, celestial and infernal. And common. The hmm. script here appears to... The, the, the runes here are a bastardized version of infernal known as abyssal. Ooh. But you and so you can recognize them for what they are. There's also ru- some elven runes for shadow and frost that you can see around here. But most of the other symbols and icon- iconography, unfortunately, with Sebastian's check, it's like nah, I don't know what these mean. Seems mm. to be some sort of magic. Your mom has like the gothiest place I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's. I don't know. It seems kind of weird that this was her kind of vibe, and then meanwhile she gave birth to me on Halloween. That's surprising. Well, <laughs> I don't know. How do you time that? How do you t- magic? I feel like it was planned. She's pretty magical. It's true. She could have just been like, "I'm gonna magically give birth now to a shadow sorcerer." I just can't see your dad marrying someone like that. I, I know and he's then like seeing... a very like humble blacksmith, like regular dude and then here's like mom worshipping ape goat bat thing and the clash of Mm -hmm. darkness versus undead can a clone have babies I ask uh, as a (laughs) as a uninitiated why Uh, well because maybe your mom was a clone that you that your dad knew Maybe. You know? I maybe he didn't know the real one. My real mom was a clone? And you never knew real mom. It's just brainstorming. Just brainstorming. Thinking outside the box. Like, <laughs> <laughs> as I look at weird runes and be like, that looks hard to read. <laughs> I'm more... You're like pointing at you're like, your mom might have been a clone. And I'm like, you can read that? <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Is that yeah. written there? <laughs> oh no, I have no idea what this says. <laughs> I'm more worried about these lights. I'm still worried mm-hmm. about these lights. The only thing that strikes you as you examine the room is that the thing that this goat is holding is a piece of delirium. <gasps> yeah, there's no way delirium. we disturb that. Or maybe <laughs> we stand back and you grab it with Mage Hand? Yeah, I mean... At the ready? I, again, I say we smash let's out stand, the lights first. Let's stand in the doorway. Yeah, let's stand in the doorway. <laughs> so that if it closes, we end up on Nye's side. The right side. The right side. All right. Okay. So we're all kind of peeking our heads in, like, watching <laughs> <laughs> you do your mage hand. Wait, guys, hold on. And I'm going to look behind us. Wand. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Not all the right. wand. Not, not the first time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to use. I'm just using it to. I'm, I'm practicing my wand moves. Pointed out, and a glowing purple hand emerges and moves forward. <laughs> and it scoops up the orb. Okay. <laughs> it is a perfectly spherical piece of delirium that it has picked up. And as, as it lifts it up, you can see that it almost looks like this piece of delirium has been encased in in spherical glass of some kind as it scoops up the orb and as you lift it up the a voice rings out in all of your minds um and it uh it says in a deep booming voice that's not part of the bargain. That's mine. Uh, can you uh, just clarify the terms of the bargain, Mr. Voice? Who are you? Put it back. Put it back. I, I, I like place it back in the hand, but my mage hand is still mm. on it. Mm. Come closer. Let me get a good look at you. 
I'm going to trust this. I've put the orb back. What's the worst that can happen? Why? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm staying Guys, by the this door. Guys, this is my new home. Don't I'm, worry. I'm going to, uh, like, clumsily try to grab at you, but I'm, a, I'm trying to watch our backs as well, so I don't really stop you. We could learn something here, guys. <laughs> I... Oh, cu Curious Sebastian steps forward and stands before the statue. Your Majesty, and like bows. Mm, you stand before the belly of death. Good. It's always good to see a wayward soul come back and visit me. How are you finding the mortal world, little one? It's, it's been pretty good so far. Um, you know, ups and downs. Mm. come back? Does he know you? Do you know him? I shout from the door. Do you know him? Do you know him? I know all who come through my good domain. Have I... Uh, wait. Hmm? Do you know me? Wait, uh, do people start off dead I'm confused when do, when was I in your domain hmm. before you came to this world and when you leave it you'll come back just like they all do fair enough um how did you get here I I'm not here. Touche. Not really. Um, <laughs> I am here. Oh. Uh oh. Mm. No, that. Mm. I feel like as he's responding, you're like picking up the globe and then putting it back, and then picking <laughs> it up I'm and like, then putting it back. I still have the mage hand on the on the orb. Um, what were the terms of the agreement that were made? I'm the new owner of this location. Um, <laughs> new buyer. Uh, just trying to get my lay on the land here. Haven't signed the lease yet, but... Checking all yeah. the closets. Only a pact for the greatest of my secrets. The secrets sold for a soul. Whose soul? Mm. The one whose soul is now bound to this place. Lennon? If that's what you call her. She, she offered you her soul in exchange for secrets. She, she died giving birth to me. Was that part of the arrangement? I only offer knowledge, not the wisdom to use it. Interesting. Don't hmm? take the knowledge. Don't take it. Don't take the knowledge, but you might be able to take the sphere. Take the orb. Take the orb. What if I take the orb? Hmm. You want this orb? <laughs> I haven't decided yet. I, uh, I this is a orb. very interesting situation that I find myself in. Um, I might prefer knowledge. Hmm. The orb! Oh my you God. can buy knowledge. You are a... You can read knowledge. Little wayward spirit. Getting through the gaps. Perhaps you should just come home. Not yet. I have more work to do here. If you want to stay, you'll have to keep out running the hounds. They miss you very much. away from the dogs. I told you dogs are trouble. 
my power comes from you and your realm, if I'm not mistaken. No, boy, you very much are mistaken. Did you mean like mistaken or mistaken? I'm so sorry, demon thing. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't. I, I'm. <laughs> Why did my mother build this place? Why did she put you in here? What knowledge was she after? That's knowledge. Don't take it. <laughs> I, That's a question. <laughs> but maybe he can answer all of our questions. But then he'll take you. N- and us. I don't want. No. Do Guys, we to, do we have to get a rope around you again and yeah. pull you out? Yeah. <laughs> this was, Pluto, this go get him. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to w- start walking into the room. What do you know about my mom? What's it worth to you? I'm going to put my hand on Sebastian's shoulder. Come on, buddy. We're going down a weird road right now. I could tell you very much, but the cost. I can always entertain a nice bargain. Demon. You need to back up. Not physically, because you're not here, but... (laughs) (laughs) Back up away. (laughs) From my friend. Stay away from him. Sebastian, leave the orb and the knowledge. Stay with your friends. I pull the mage hand off the orb. No. No, no, like, I don't pick it up. I leave the orb. I move the mage hand. It disappears. I wanted the orb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want the knowledge, you want the orb? I, want I, the orb. I think it's bad either way. I, I, I step away and kind of like turn away from the statue and turn back to Pluto. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's take a minute and figure out where that hole came from. Feo. Can you close the hole? It's a little breezy. I think we, let's get out of here for a second. Let's go see that other room that we don't know and think about this. Feo, we could find out what happened to my mom. We could also figure out what, like, brought the meteor and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, we could find out what brought the meteor. We could find out maybe a way into the castle. It's, it's I a think you're forgetting your dad's words, though. That the past needs to be left in the past. My mom built this place. My mom put this here. And she put a lot of crazy crap in here. Yes, and she died why? doing it. She didn't die doing it. She died giving birth to me. That's entirely different. But you know, most you don't likely, think they're related. It sounds like they it's related. It might be. That's something else that I want to know. But I think knowledge is not worth your soul. Knowledge is power. Yeah, but Weird Belly Demon is not the place to get it. Get a book. There's a bunch of books upstairs. Yeah. There's more research we can find, and your soul is not worth the knowledge. Demon, one last question. Yes. What is your name? (laughs) (laughs) That one will cost you for sure. It was worth a try. We'll see ourselves out now. Have Have a good day. You turn to leave. The doors slam shut. Uh oh. Oh, now we're all in the room. Hello. Uh, This is why we stay at the door. I pull out my wand. Watch it, demon. I have a wand. (laughs) Hmm. You don't want to make a deal. No? You're not interested, eh? I'm very interested, but I need some time to contemplate. You still haven't told me what the deal was that was previously made. As I said, that will cost you too. See, this is this is why we're not getting along. There needs to be like, like how how Can do I know? Can we have a know? sample? Can we have a sample yeah, like, of your knowledge? Like a, a, yeah, that's the, like if if we could try some of your knowledge, see yeah. what, what you're offering, then I'd be more willing to give something for more of it. See what I'm saying here? Right now, all mm. that you're telling me is. Uh, you're dark, you're evil, you're mysterious, and for all I know, I might die just talking to you. So, I don't you know might. I understand. How about we make a bet? 
sounds even worse. Sounds worse, Sebastian. Are you a gambling man? I know something about you. What? Oh. He's just taunting you now. Oh, he knows how to get it. You're afraid, it. aren't you, of my little puppy? Hmm? You're not a puppy. I have been all my life. Show me that you are not afraid. And I'll answer one question for you. Okay. I know you're not afraid. Not afraid of a dog? I am. <laughs> we'll go hide in the corner. Okay. Okay. Prove it. And the green tears coming from the statue turn black as an inky shadow drops into the ground in front of it and coalesces into the form of the hulking hound that has been following you through this complex the same hound that has been following you your entire life, Sebastian. Veo, this thing is horrifying. Yeah, I'm not having a good time. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm, I've backed myself into its a corner. Its eyes are an inky abyss. Its maw of teeth and leading to a throat of endless nothingness as it bellows out in front of you. And the voice says one last time, All you have to do is live. Roll for initiative. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, wait, no, I'm not going to put me in the corner. I'm back into the corner. Uh, closer to the door. Like, I didn't go very far in the room yet. And I went up to you, yeah, to kind of, like, talk to you. Just be like, hey, buddy. <laughs> Skull splitter. Scary demon dogs. I believe. Nice. So... We've killed a lot of gnolls, which are like dogs. Mm -hmm. So this is just another dog. See them more like hyenas. Yeah. I guess they're kind of like a dog. Yeah, so this should be easier. This is only like a nightmare from your whole life. Yeah, it's only my worst nightmares come into reality, and I just need to prove that I'm not afraid of it. Oh, so this is like what I imagine what my worst nightmares would be, and it, I'm living it. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 24 hours ago, you killed your mom with fire. No, the... Simulacma. Veo, what you got? Simulacma. 14. Sebastian? 16. 3. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. haven't. Oops. I'd rather take the Simulacma. Yeah. Than Bring the her scary back. demons of life. Live demons. In the form of dogs. <laughs> With like bellies coming out and dripping acid shadow. Knowledge is not worth yeah, it. Yeah, I, I agree. This goth aesthetic is not. Dude, we're it's really not changing picture. the theme. Yeah. After we take over. I'm 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 done with this. We need to incorporate some colors other than obsidian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like what goes well with the obsidian? Gold. Some nice purples. Purple, yeah. Mm, yes. Blue. Yeah. Some, like cool colors. Okay. We need like a north facing. Window. So. <laughs> <laughs> with like nice light, get Sunlight. everything all assembled here. Okay, so as it coil, as the shadows uncoil onto the ground, getting that shadow dog in there. Ooh, it's just a wee puppy. <laughs> Puppies are vicious. Uh oh. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get rid of the lights. 
Oh yeah, the lights. I love the lights. The icors of the room coalesce oh my God. into four more lurching shadows as the hound takes its full form. It is almost emaciated, the, the whole hound. like It has that lean muscle to it, that whole hulking upper body and thick limbs, but you can still see that there's not, not like an ounce of fat on its body. And its underside looks like it's been torn open. You can see like the ribs and this just shadowy, inky mass just leaking out from the bottom of it as if its rib cage was split open. Its jaw is almost split in half as well. And these twisted shadows then take form in the room around you all as they begin to close in for the kill. The first up to act is the hound and sebastian what is the name of this hound um i had named it reaper okay <laughs> sebastian oh, name. Uh, how fitting that was before we started the campaign i named my my future puppy reaper because i thought it was mm -hmm. cute and now i wish that it wasn't so we're gonna kidding. know how it got its name in a moment <laughs> reaper lurches forward And as it does so, the, the shadows around it almost make it look like it is trailing its position. And it's almost difficult to tell which is real, its body or its shadow, as it comes forward and, at and attacks out, coming to maul you, Sebastian. I'm not a fr- ah! <laughs> <laughs> And it gets a, an, an 18 and a 19 to hit. Oh, Oh god! I just like go down, and I'm like. Ah. It's thick. As it re rears back up, its thick claws rake into you and drag across your side, and it bites down into your shoulder with its muzzle. And in total, you take twenty-one points of slashing and piercing damage. Okay. 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 Cool. Yeah. It is your turn, Sebastian. I, I have a, a rules-related question very quickly. Sure. Um, if I cast a spell as a bonus action, can I then use a wand as an action? Yes, you can. Okay, cool. Um, I am going to... Pluto, you're coming with me. Just, Where are we going? Uh, we're going to thunderstep just to the back of the room because I feel very surrounded right now. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, so I grab Pluto and I'm going to just be like, I need out! Okay. And that, that should hit a few of the shadows and the hound as well. Yeah, it's a 10-foot radius, so... Yeah, I was looking yeah the closer two shadows and the hound? Yeah. Great, so i got to make constitution saving throws. For the first shadow gets a natural one. So does the second shadow. Oh. Uh, and Reaper gets a big old pen. Also, uh, sorry, I meant to kind of say this. I, I'm going to use um, two, two points to quicken that, okay. that spell. Okay. Nice. 16 damage. <laughs> okay. The two shadows are bloodied. So you want to mark them both as bloodied? Superb. And then as my action, because that was my bonus action, I'm going to cast, uh, use my cone of fear from my wand. And I hold out the wand and I yell, run! Uh, how that, that has a 60-foot cone. Yeah. And... You can hear the vo uh, the laughing of the the n creature as it says, <laughs> "They are fear incarnate." <laughs> yeah, that's fair. It was worth a shot. 
None of them, eh? They're all immune to the frightened condition. I was hoping something in there would catch, but okay. It was worth a shot. Yeah. Does this make you afraid? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, in fact, because you are facing your deepest fear, I need you to ma- make oh, a so wisdom sorry. saving throw I'm so sorry. <laughs> right now. I got a five. Okay. Uh, you are frightened. So on Good. your next turn, you will be running as fast as you can away from everything. Hmm. There's a big yeah. hole in the wall. You don't have to run somewhere where you can't where not you're not gonna be safe, but you must spend your action on your next turn to run. Okay? Okay. Cool. Alrighty. We now go to Veo. Oh, I'm scared out of my mind. Uh so I'm gonna back myself as far as I can into a corner. Take out my bow and I'm aiming at that crazy scary dog. Uh, using my dread ambusher. So I'm gonna take running. three attacks for my first turn. Numero uno. Who are you attacking? The uh, dog. Okay, you have disadvantage on your attack rolls. I rolled a one, so I probably Okay. <laughs> that's the lowest I yeah, can go. That's the lo- uh, so that first How one. Low? So the yeah. first shot, it seems like the arrow sailed right through it, oh. right through it was, and just didn't do anything. Hmm. Uh, second attack. Seven. Again, you're shooting at shadows. I try it one more time. Go for a veil. Ooh, uh, 18. That does find something. Now, with my Dread Ambusher, it gives me 1d8 damage. Is that just for my first roll? Uh, yeah, that would, uh, would apply to the, the extra attack that you make with okay. the Dread Ambusher. Um, 18 damage. Ugh. Ouch. Ooh, that oh, that sharpshooter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Ooh. As, as it does, so the, the it... It makes that kind of canine whimper as the arrow strikes it. And for a moment, all the flickering shadows around it stop. And it coalesces almost into a single form for a moment. It will no, there will no longer be disadvantage on attacks against it until it starts the ability again. Huh. Well, it makes me feel good that I hit this mutt in the muzzle. <laughs> Next up are the shadows. Sorry, it's delayed. <laughs> the shadows flicker and flit, sailing towards each of you. What? Uh, oh, one oh. of the shadow, two of the shadows fly towards Pluto. The other two towards Veo. Um, as the voice cries out, <laughs> "How far?" Little wayward spirit, the shadows will consume your friends. Their speed is forty feet. Can two all in, make the two it. inner oh, ones are bloodied. One. The two outer ones are not. I get a 19 and a 18 against Pluto. Uh, one hit, one miss. And a 8 and a 9 against Thea. No! <laughs> nope. Pluto, <laughs> you take 7 necrotic damage. And yeah. oh, oh. your strength is reduced by 2. Ah! Oh, shadow! They're throwing shade. As the as basically the the creatures, these shadowy creatures basically have no arms or limbs. They're just tendrils of shadow that strike out, and like a whip, they kind of form around and just sting right towards your heart. Ow. And you just feel it, almost like piercing like a mosquito, and it and you feel it sap your strength. It went through the same hole that the. Uh... <laughs> that I used for the... <laughs> it's like, no! <laughs> That's a fresh wound! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next up, Paluto, it's your turn. Um, I scream in pain as my heart is stabbed because I think that's an appropriate response. Um, yeah. I flutter my lady cape and then I pull <laughs> out my drift globe and I cast daylight. Okay. Nice. Ta-da! 
and I cast it on um, the hound. Can I point? It, can I do it on a thing? On a thing? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, uh, I, or on a a point I choose. I'll, I'll just point. do it in the in the middle of the room. Okay, sunlight emanates from the room. And the shadows will now have disadvantage on their attack rolls. But the uh, as a creature of pure shadow stuff, the hound isn't weakened by it, but it isn't doesn't like it. So yeah, yeah well, take that dog. Nice move. Anything else, Pluto? Um, I'm gonna hold my heart. Okay. We go to the top of the round with the with Reaper, the Mastiff, who. Needs to find a spot where he can actually get into fight there. Okay. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, he's going to misty step right up behind Sebastian. Oh. <laughs> At least he was at behind you. <laughs> it's not my day. And uh, lay into oh, Sebastian with his claws. So he basically, instead of a misty step, it's more like a shadowy step. The the dog falls back into its own shadow like it collapses into into the shadow oh. that then slinks across uh, along the ground and then pops right back up behind Sebastian and just rakes right ba- down your back it gets a 12 and an 18 to hit even with Shield, it would match my AC, so that would still be a hit. So there's no point. Okay, one hits. One hits? Okay. Yeah. It's going to be 10 points of slashing damage. Do I get a shot at the dog? Are you adjacent to it? Uh, I guess no. If he's on the other side of it. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it's kind of come right up behind Sebastian. No! Okay. I'm trying to protect you. Thank you. Okay. But I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> Cool. We go to Sebastian. So Sebastian, you are frightened, um, and you can't willingly move source to, so closer to the source of your fear. And because of the feared condition that you're afflicted by supernaturally in this room, you need to spend your action to move away oh, from no. the dog. Oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool, 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 cool. cool. So, <laughs> whichever path you can get the... Uh, uh, Run to I climb through Don't Pluto's legs, screaming. <laughs> yes. I am screaming, climbing through your legs, being like, this is it, this is how I die, I saw it in my dreams, please don't let it get me Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Demon, I am afraid, I am afraid. And the demon just laughs. <laughs> Crawl, worm. Crawl back to your grave. I'll go to my grave just. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Don't. So you provoke opportunity attacks from the shadow and the dog. So the dog gets a 18 to hit you, and the shadow, who's got disadvantage, only gets an 8 because of the daylight. So I get you one more time with Reaper, uh, who gets uh, a good old max damage there. So so 16 points of damage. So this is where my wonderful feature, um, what is it called? Strength of the Grave is going to come into effect. Okay. Because I'm at zero hit points. Mm-hmm. Um, so I need to roll a, um, a charisma saving throw that is five plus the damage taken. Okay. So what what was the damage taken? It was uh it was sixteen points. So you need twenty one. And does he does he get to minus the extra? Is that how does it work? If I if I only like, do you can take I take five more than then, my hit points worth of damage? I've never seen it. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm down. Okay, you go down. You uh so as you as you lunge away from Sebastian uh Sebastian as you lunge away you're uh, I'll say that you kind of dive because you tried to like crawl and you just collapse as, as you fall to the ground at the at the other end uh under my under me yeah underneath 
Pluto. So I'm standing on your corpse. Yep. Cool. Veo, you're up. Okay. So I uh, cast Zephyr Strike. Zephyr Strike, which doesn't give me opportunity attacks. Mm hmm. You're right beside me, right? I turn and use one use of my healing kit. Okay. To stabilize you. Woo! So you're stabilized. And then I uh, use my uh, feline agility and I run to the other side of the room. <laughs> okay. So you basically pull out, pull out the healer's kit and bandage him up really, really quick to stabilize him. Like, rub some dirt in it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and he's stable. And then you rush to the other side of the room. And I rush okay. to the other side of the room. Okay. We need to get some hits on those things. Also, there are two bloody shadows. I can't talk. Okay. I'm the dead. shadows, <laughs> the two perfect. shadows that were on you, Veo, follow you Woo! to the other side of the room. Oh, okay. Um, Did they get to her? 40 feet speed, yeah. And how wide is now, the I, room? Now, I went... You would have gone all the way? Okay. Yeah. So they they, uh, they just beeline right after you. Mm-hmm. But they have to use all their movement and action to do that. But they continue to pursue you. The other two go right for Pluto. Hi. But because of the daylight spell, they have disadvantage on their attacks. Uh, one still manages to get a 20. Oh, great. And the other only gets a 9. Okay. So, Pluto, you take 7 points of necrotic damage and lose 4 points of strength. <laughs> My armor's getting really heavy. <laughs> uh, what's your strength down to? Uh, big old 12. Okay, so yeah, you the, uh, your armor is now too heavy for you. <laughs> so you're uh, you're encumbered by it. So your your speed is reduced by 5 feet. Guys, we're going to die. We're going to die. Oh. We're going to die. It is your turn though, Pluto. Aha. Hit, I say hit the bloodied one. Um just kill some. I don't feel so good. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Where am I? Um, oh, this is getting... Just had to just... We love demons, don't we? Uh, okay. So the... Both of them are kind of on me. Yep. The so, two bloodied ones, yep. And they're like... And the demon's dog? The demon dog is coming after Sebastian. Demon dog, stay. And can I? I want to throw my javelin mm -hmm. and call elven lightning and throw it at the dog. And will the lightning explosion hit the uh, the the shadowy peoples? Well, these two shadows would have had to move to get after me. Yeah. To attack me. So I'm gonna say. Then that's Say that into the mic. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... So, yeah, I realized that we I didn't move the shadows from, from last turn, so they would have had to move. So you could position yourself in such a way that you could throw the javelin and hit all three of them with okay. the bolt. Yeah, I'm going to uh, use my first attack first to stab the first one and then wind up and then throw. Okay. So uh, 19 to hit. <laughs> that hits. Nice. For... for Oh, wait. No, hold on. My damage has gone way down. <laughs> uh, for nine damage. Okay. That bloodies the Mastiff. Ooh. And the, the lightning damage against the shadows? Uh, 22 to hit. Uh, the You just roll the damage against the shadows. Yeah. It's 46 lightning, and I have to make dexterity saving throws for them. Which I fail, but I make for the dog. 15 damage. They are destroyed. The two shadows are both destroyed by the lightning. So you fire the javelin of li lightning, dispersing the shadows with a, a corona of electrical energy. Um, and it uh, also severely wounds the shadow mastiff. Were those both the bloodied ones? Yep. Okay. 
Oh, and the and the dog takes an extra seven damage from the javelin javelin. Okay. So he takes fifteen, I guess, halved plus the seven. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to rush the dog. Okay. And I'm going to slam it into the ground with my shield. Nice, nice. So you basically run forward to retrieve the yeah. spear, slamming the dog into the ground. Nice. Uh, getting a... 17. I get a 15. Woohoo! So you push it to the ground and just... Oh! Down, down, dog. <laughs> and it slides across the ground and as it... Uh, um, and starts to kind of like coalesce around. Cool. Um... We go to the top of the round with the Shadow Mastiff. It leaps to its feet, and the shadows come back around it once more. And it, um, so once again, it's got its disadvantage aura happening, and it just goes right for you, Pluto. Hi, doggy. Getting a 10 to hit and a 19 to hit. Uh, the 19 ties. Okay. That's going to be 12 points of oh. slashing damage. Um, I'm gonna repost and okay. just can I can I punch it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean the spear is right there. Just, you could have picked it up at the end of, okay. end of your turn. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So on its miss, uh, nineteen to hit. That hits for eleven damage. I'm so weak. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. S okay. That was just your repost. So, Sebastian, over to you. So, you're stable. Roll a d20. If you get a 20, you wake up. That's a... That's an 18. Okay, no, but you are stable anyways. Pretty good. Cool. That was okay, close. Okay. I, I open my eyes for a second, and I see Pluto fighting the dog, and I just go, ah, and <laughs> pass back out. Fair. Cool. Veo. Me. Okay. Um, again, wanting to get away from these shadows, I cast another Zephyr Strike, mm -hmm. my bonus action, and I rush across diagonally, to the room. Okay. So again, I can make it 60 feet diagonally. And I turn around and I take two shots at the closest shadow to me. Okay. So you're going to leap across the pools of Icoria. Not all the way to the yeah. dog, Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there. And shoot them. Nice. And I'm going to shoot uh, the closest shadow with my first shot. 17. That's a hit. Nice. Boom. Okay. Woo. Okay. All right. Um, so oh man. Fourteen plus two eights. Thirty. <laughs> Thirty. Thirty damage. 30 the damage. shadow is just destroyed. Nice. Even though it only takes half damage from the attack because of its resistance, it's just wiped out by nice. the, the amount of damage. And Love I take that. the second shot at the other shadow. Uh, for ten. Ten. Ten to, to hit. Ten to hit. Yeah. Uh, that is a miss, I'm afraid. It just Boom. sails right through the shadowy tendrils. That's all right. Nice shot. I got one. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. <laughs> and, uh, that's it. Okay. The shadow flies back towards you, Veo, in pursuit. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're just making the shadow chase you around. Yep. Chasing shadows. <laughs> uh, this time it gets an 18 to hit. It's going to be 13 necrotic damage, and you lose two points of strength as it finally reaches out with its shadowy tendrils and rakes uh, through your body, sending a chill going through your entire system. I just did override. Yeah. I'm just going to erase it later. <laughs> I'm already not strong, so... Okay. Pluto, you're up. It's Pluto's turn? Uh, yeah. Um... I'm going to beat a dead dog. <laughs> That's not good, but I'm gonna. I gotta do it. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm going with it. Stabby, stabby. Oh, there. Uh, oh, great. twenty-two to hit. Uh, for nine damage. 
My claws are so unstrong. <laughs> so I'm just like, I yeah. Stop haunting my friend. You are a mean dog. Uh, 22 to hit for uh, another 6 damage. Alrighty. Does it even care that I'm stabbing it? You are just slashing it and slashing it and slashing it. Did you roll those? Uh, um, and as, as you do, hacking away at these shadows, as it just starts to, sit, to disintegrate into tatters, and the shadows fall to the ground like ribbons and are gone. And I keep attacking where it was mm-hmm. in in a in a sort of dramatic overly dramatic way ah. i like that <laughs> yeah i'm like really trying to sell it like ah, did you get, ah, ah. i'm stabbing it with uh, my spear mm-hmm. and then i run over to sebastian and cradle his head <laughs> okay and i and i go are you okay are you okay <laughs> are, do, you don't have to be afraid anymore I'm so scared, Pluto. <laughs> I'm so scared. And I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you one of your health potions. A greater oh. healing or a regular? Um, oh With the regular kind. Yeah, I, uh, uh, a greater. Cool. I'm gonna. And That's I and so I and I I make you guzzle it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking over being like Jesus. being attacked by shadow and like. And we're, I'm again. I'm just making this way more dramatic than it needs to be. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. We're back. Oh yeah, I killed your dog. Great. Well, actually, I don't know if it died. It just kind of disappeared. There's still a shadow over there. Help mm. me. Yeah. Um, as you wake up, Sebastian, you can still see the hound in the corner, and it's just sitting in the corner of the room where the shadowy ribbons that Pluto tore apart are. Oh wait, sorry. Was there still another shadow? Uh, Funny. yeah, I, I, I assume that, uh, Veo can definitely deal with it on her, her turn. Yeah, okay, we can, yeah, we can sorry, wrap it up sorry, there. I got yeah. out of, I, yeah. It's okay. We went into a dramatic moment. And <laughs> yeah, and it was good. It was good. I, I'm cool with that. Okay, yeah. cool. Shadow, that Shadow was killed by Veo. Yeah. I killed him. Yeah. Yeah. And with, and with, with the final hound, it just dissipates. Pluto. Pluto, yeah. prop me up. Yeah. Prop me up. <laughs> hey, hey, demon. I passed your test. I wasn't afraid at all. (laughs) (laughs) Not even once. I like wipe a bunch of blood and like (laughs) spit out like a bunch of blood. I'm whatever. I put my hand up. I was afraid. Luckily, this wasn't my test. I I was actually afraid too. I am unconvinced, but (coughs) this hound shall follow you till the end of your days as a reminder of the fear that you could not overcome, that you needed these pathetic, the help of your pathetic friends to survive. But you may call on it, and maybe one day you will not fear it anymore. Did you miss the sweet thunder step I did? Whatever. Is he trash? You may can... ask of me one question. Think about this real careful. Yeah, I don't... Team huddle, team huddle. Okay. Team huddle, team huddle. I'm in. Uh, okay, so we're all like huddled around. I'm like, guys, I just gained a pet dog. Should I ask him what we should name it? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, you no, can do that bad on idea, own. bad idea. Yeah. Uh, should we ask him something obviously about your mom? Just ask him where is your mom no. now? But he could be no, so but, vague I mean, about it. What if the answer is dead? Wh- uh, where Where is your mom's soul? Why did she build this place? He said she was here. Yeah, he, he said the soul is here. Question. He, he already had... answered that question. What if we What if we ask? Oh man, um, I want to know. Well, remember you said you wanted to know why? What's his name? She built the place. Why did she build this place? Ask already? carefully. I have much knowledge, oh. but I cannot answer all 
questions. Oh, maybe he knows why the media anything knows within why my knowledge. So cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> anything that is within my knowledge, I um, shall answer can, for you. Can we know what's within your knowledge first? Because I feel like it's a waste can of a question a list if you're of all the things. No. You know. Nah, that would that would be a pretty fair demon if I let you get away with that much. He uh, said he knew something about me. Yeah. What does he know? Oh, maybe yeah. Ask like that. is that is that? Uh, but I feel like there's way. But like, why did the meteor hit Drakenheim? Question: If we want more questions <laughs> answered, can we fight more demon dogs? That's not no our wishing question. for more wishes. <laughs> okay. Do I ask what does the demon know about me? Yeah, Do I yeah, ask? Yeah. Are we sure? Like, there's so many other things we could ask. Mm. Where is your dad? Well, you talked about. Don't give that in the possibilities Hold of things because I obviously know Where is Caspia's treasure? You no. talked about. You talked about. My dad is much. Or he talked about. Um, knowing like you came from here he said you came from here i did he say all of us came or you came from so what like maybe there's he he has something to do with the meteor or your yeah, birth or the, the death of your how, mom. Do, how do i word that like what what ties me does this wand make yeah, me look cool <laughs> does this wand make me look cool <laughs> no. does, is your birth tied to the meteor or does your power tied to the meteor and yeah, how is your tie no how how? And it's okay. It's much you know, more we don't have to think. It, we don't have to worry too much. Like, we'll get other answers yeah. elsewhere. I'm sure there's other demons. But if there's a pressing thing on your mind, I want you to follow your heart right I now. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm into it. You faced your fear. You Jamal. said you said you knew something about me. I want to know what connection I have to the events that have taken place in Drakenheim with my mom, with this house, with, with all of this. There's, there's something here that connects me to this, and there's something you know about me. Hmm. I know much, but you have asked more than one question there, mortal. You want to know of your connections to that blasted city to your mother, to this place, to this village, to your birth, you may ask of me one, and I will tell you what I know. It seems fitting, since we're in the house that I was born in, dealing with the sanctum that my mother constructed, what... Why was my birth what it was? The, the, the storm, the undead, the, the shadow magic, the what was, was, what was my mom doing that caused this whole thing, that caused me? <sighs> she was only doing what I taught her how to do. And in that trade, a soul for a soul, you rode into this world from a realm of shadow, from deep within my belly, wayward spirit that you are, and now here you stand in this world. She traded her soul for me. She chose to sacrifice herself to bring me here? I'm just asking for clarification. That's not a second question. <laughs> <laughs> Good clarifier. He, uh, the voice pauses for a moment. Maybe call him like, start to start butter him up a bit. Oh, great demon. Oh, handsome Somewhat full belly demon. Full belly demon. <laughs> <laughs> really lay it on. I think he likes that stuff. Wings. Compliment his wings. <laughs> With the most glorious wings. And the weirdest, funniest. And the weirdest eyes. face. <laughs> if you want the answer to that question, you'll have to ask your mother. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, 
mom's dead. She died. You, you said that she sacrificed her soul to bring me here. Your mother is dead. I'm getting a few more answers out of this. Okay, nice. Okay, that's I'm, that's I'm nice. waiting. But is there a but? But demon lord. Oh, great knowledgeable <laughs> demon. If you want those answers, they're going to cost you more. Yeah, I see we figured that on our own. And that's where we're gonna end for tonight. <sighs> Come here, puppy. Go. <laughs> Keep that thing away. No, no. It's not allowed. <laughs> Does the dog just hang out next to me now? We have issues. Wait, can I see it? Is it there now? Or can only he see it? Well, depending on your next move, um, you, you guys have definitely gained enough XP to level up. Woo! Uh, which does mean that you Zing. will be able to summon your little Shadow Mastiff now. And... Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll take it from there. That'll be some interesting things. Um, I think for next time, all of you can prepare your level up, but you will will take that from when when you take a rest next. If you want to continue, there's still more to explore here. Uh, but this is a pretty big milestone, and if you still want to talk to this big old demon, then uh, we'll see if you want to cook up some more deals. Oh man! Oh no! Listen, I may have nine lives, but I'm not willing to give them up to this. <laughs> oh, if you have nine, we could eat more questions. Nope. Yeah, yeah, we could we could get that sounds like a so really good many trade. more questions. We'll just trade like a few of your souls. <laughs> nope. Like four. Maybe he wants delirium. Oh, yeah, give him more spheres. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Huh. So that's where we're gonna wrap it up for tonight. Thank you. That was uh, intense. Yeah, that was super. Oh man. Woo. I did, I did so well in that last battle, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is my strength returning? or Yo, When when you gone. take a short rest, you will regain your strength. Okay. Oh, yeah. good, because I'm at negative two right now. Um, <laughs> my arm is really heavy. Me. So we'll, we'll be back again uh, next Tuesday, 6 p.m., back to our, our usual time. Hopefully our, all of our health issues stay in line and we don't get another polar vortex and all that jazz. Um, yeah, and of course, for those of you that joined us late or missed the earlier part, this will be up on YouTube by Friday, so you can uh, catch up with uh, all the all the fun and all of our previous episodes there as well. Um, and yeah, just a huge thanks to our crew. As usual, we had Jill as Veo Senya, Kelly as Sebastian Crow and Joe as Paluto Jackson tonight. So a big thank you to them as well as our producer Clayton for keeping things running behind the scenes and being super, super active in chat and talking to y'all and telling them about my 98 hour work week. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and thanks to all of you for uh, watching with us tonight. And of course, if you're enjoying the stream and you want to support us, uh, you can check out our Patreon uh, which you can find using the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. So please check us out. Yeah, and of course, make sure that you also check out our f giveaway for the Skull Splitter Dice, who have sponsored our episode tonight. Uh, the links are right down in the description below, so you can enter to win your chance to win a set of Skull Splitter's amazing uh, dice sets. Uh, or you can also head on over to skullsplitterdice.com. Use that discount code DDUDES to save 15% if you cannot resist these awesome dice. And I wouldn't blame you if you couldn't. They're so good. They're so nice. Yep. Uh, and of course, as I was said before, the, the VOD will be up on YouTube here on Friday. And we've got some cool episodes coming uh, in the next couple of weeks. We just shot some episodes this weekend. And we're shooting more next weekend as well. We're going to have, we got quite a lot of cool so stuff coming up. It's a busy up. time for us. Yeah, it's been, it's, it has been. Uh, so you'll be able to find all that on YouTube on Thursday and Friday this week. Uh, tonight's game session uh, featured audio by Tabletop Audio. Again, I uh, love the playlist. I uh, really like it. Yeah. yeah. And the intro video uh, voiceover uh, by 100 Years Boar. Thank you so much. And our game accessories were generously provided by Axe and Shield. He, uh, he creates the beautiful initiative tracker. He also makes flight stands and all sorts of other cool things that can really up your game at your table. So check them out. And as well, if you're wondering where the dungeon and train stuff all come from, that is Dwarven Forge. It's their, their new Dungeons of Doom stuff. 
all the LEDs and all that cool stuff that you saw there is all Dwarven Forge stuff. I uh, treated myself for the holidays. Got some <laughs> gift cards yeah, for my birthday. Yeah, really green uh, Yeah, light. and of course we used miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids as well. So if you're wondering how you can get your hands on those, that's where they're from. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a lovely evening playing some D&D with you all. And we will see you next week back in Drakenheim. Bye.